What is error code C458? What does it mean? What do you do? What's wrong? What could be wrong? What tools do you use? And how do you figure it out? Today I'm going to talk to you about E458 or C458. We're working on a Samsung unit. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. Let's get started. C458. C458, outdoor fan error. That's the description. Checklist, are the input power voltage and power connections correct? Is the motor wire connected to the outdoor PBA correctly? Is, is there no assembly error or non-assembly in the terminal of the motor wire connector? Is there no obstacle at the surrounding of the motor and propeller? All right, here's the uh, troubleshooting procedure. Pause the video, stop it, take a look at this. This may help you. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is visually look at the fan. And I'm gonna take a little stick here, and I'm just gonna turn it. It doesn't look like anything is impeding the turning of that propeller, that blade. Now the second thing I'm gonna do is take the top off. Now let's go through the troubleshooting procedure. First, restart after power off. So if you wanna restart the power, do that. Does the fan rotate? Yes. Reassemble the fan wire and input the power again. Is the fan error appearing again? Yes. Is the voltage of A number one through number three over 250 volts? Let's check that. So is it spinning? Yes, it's spinning. Here's the wire. Here's the plug. Take the plug out. Plug it back in. Looks like it's in there. This is the LED that's going to be displayed, the pattern on the outdoor board when you have fan error. See, the yellow LED is on, the green and red are off. It's really hard to see it, but I'm going to show you and see if you can see it. You see where it says 458? See, yellow LED is on. It says fan error right there. Just want you to see that. Now here is where the fan plugs in. There's the Molex plug. And we're gonna check from one to three. I'm gonna switch out my test leads and put the little skinny test leads on there. Just in case you don't know for the check which one's one and which one's three, the red wire, which is all the way over here to the left, this is one. So we're gonna be checking from that little first terminal to the third terminal which should be the black wire and it says you should measure over 250 volts DC take your meter put it on volts DC right there see VDC and then take your test leads and gently place it on one and three 338 volts DC okay is the voltage over 250 volts DC? Yes. Is the voltage of three to five and three to six within one volts to 15 volts DC during the operation? Now put your meter on volts DC and then we're gonna measure from three to five, like that. All right. And then we're gonna measure from three to six, like that right there. Make sure it's on there good. Three to six, five volts. If no, on this step, it says exchange the outdoor board, outdoor PBA. If yes, PBA problem or motor problem, check the PBA first and check the operation. Exchange the fan motor. So what I want to do at this point is I want to check the resistance readings of that motor to rule out the motor being the problem. And I've got a chart that I can reference when I do my readings, my checks. Now to read the resistance, I'm going to set my meter to ohms and I'm going to read from black to red, black to blue, black to yellow, and black to white. And I'm going to look at my resistance tables. 
from my resistance readings, it looks like the motor's bad, but I'm gonna go ahead and order the board and the motor just to make sure that, that I'm covered. If you need the resistance tables that I was using to be able to figure out if that fan motor was bad, I can send those to you. I've got a bunch of guides to be able to help you. Click the join button, become a member. Let me know in the comments you joined level one and I'll give you my email and then I can send you those guides. Back on site, before I install the new parts, I'm going to clean the coil. So I'm using some Tri-Power HD. I'm going to fill up the coil gun. And there's a water hose right here. This is a double coil. So I'm going to try to split the coil open to clean it better. So I'm going to cut these zip ties. And before I clean it, I'm going to take a socket or a adjustable crescent wrench and take the blade off of this motor. That way I get it out of my way. I'll show you how dirty this coil is. Pretty dirty. Make sure the breaker's off. We got a bracket on top. We got to take these off to be able to separate the coil. Whoops. Now we can separate the two coils. What do you call a double coil? It's a coil that has more than one row. You want to separate them. That way you go, you get all the way through with your coil cleaner and your water. Okay, let's get to cleaning. Let that set for about five to ten minutes. I'm going to go ahead and pour the coil cleaner that I didn't use back into the jug. If you don't have a coil gun, check out the link in the description. Click the link and get one. If you need coil cleaner, I'll put the link down below for the coil cleaner I use as well. And if you want to learn how to clean an indoor wall mount air handler, a mini split, then I'll put a link down below to show you how to clean a mini split. I'll wash this out.
Now look at this coil. Clean. I've got some zip ties. I'm going to put it back together now. Got the coil back together with some zip ties and those brackets. I want to make sure they're in place. Now I'm going to take the old motor out and make sure I secure the bracket. And then I've got these four Phillips screws. Very easy to take out. There's the old motor. Here's the old motor and the new motor. You can see it's brushless DC motor, 310 volts DC, 40 watts. Got the meter set to ohms. I'm gonna measure from the black wire to the white wire first on the new motor. I've got my micro leads and we've got one. And then I'm gonna go from black to yellow. All right, so black to yellow, I've got 200. Now I'm going to go over here to the old motor and do the same exact thing, going from black to white, and looks like we've only got 0.497 where we did have one. Now I'm going to go from black to yellow, and we've only got 38, and we were measuring 200. So something's defi definitely wrong with this older motor. I'm going to go ahead and just replace the motor, I'm going to restart the unit and see what happens without replacing that control board. Make sure you get the Phillips screws in the bottom of the bracket that holds this outdoor fan motor. New motors installed. Make sure you line up the smooth part of the shaft of that motor with the smooth part of this blade. You see there's the smooth part. So that means it needs to go like this. All right. And if you get it lined up correctly, you'll be able to see the shaft. Take the nut. Usually it's righty tighty, but for this it's lefty tighty. Alright, now just tighten it up. Route the wire for the motor around the board. It plugs in right there. Make sure that you know how these panels go on. There are hooks. See that? Hook, 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 hook. So what do you do? You take it. You insert those hooks. It's hard to see. You insert those hooks. Okay. Like that. And then you swing the panel over. Okay, like this. And the other hooks go in right here. I like the design of these. And then this goes right here. Now I put a few of the screws in, just in case you don't know, that's how this bracket goes on. Before I put the top on, I'm going to plug my disconnect in. I want to check the LEDs on the board, and we'll see what the difference is. Well, there you go. See if we get the same error code before. You turn the unit on cooling, you immediately get the error code. Power on. Set it to about 70 and before it would run a few minutes, well, a few seconds and then you'd have a code, but we shall see. Let's go check the outdoor unit. Outdoor fan motor is running. Be very careful. Don't do this. Don't do what I'm doing. Never have the fan running and put your hands down in here. Be very careful. Now we're going to look at the board's LEDs. Red is on. Green is blinking. Yellow is off. That means normal operation. Alright, I'm going to put the top back on. Looking good other than the fact that this side of the pad is sunk in the ground. All right. Definitely need to raise it up. Why am I not changing the new PCB that I ordered, the new PBA? 
because if I can get more time out of this older board, then that's helping my customer. What am I gonna do with this new board? I'm gonna offer to give this to the customer where they can keep it somewhere safe. And if we do have a problem with the board, then we don't have to order it. Or I'm gonna take it back to the parts room. I'm gonna label it with their name and the date. And I'm gonna put good because this is a good part. Still working like a champ. It's 75 degrees in here. Equipment's blowing out 56 degree air. So I'd say we're in good shape. If you want to learn how to work on mini splits, how to clean mini splits, or how to size mini splits, I'm going to put a few videos down below for you so that you can learn. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. Let me know if you got any questions. If you have any comments, put those below. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.